when they die, those who are born in the blissful realm, the blissful realm means the, the realm that enjoys sense pleasure, that's human realm, six celestial realms, and then the Brahma realm. No, they enjoy the Brahma realm, they enjoy the jhana bliss. So those who are born in this blissful realm, if they amount to the number of grains of sand on my tongue, the number of living beings who are born in the four woeful abodes will outnumber the number of sand in the whole art. In the whole art. Just imagine. No, so the people, they don't know. No, when they die, what will happen? No, so nobody can see. But the Buddha can see. No, they, he can see. And he also teach you that you can see also if you can develop super normal power. <laughs> you can also see. No, so that is very important to live wisely. No, to live here, you enjoy sense pleasure as much, no, as much as you like. But still, when you die, you'll be born in the, in the blissful realm. <laughs> so, no, just in this morning we say, just taking three full refuge. And then observing five more of precept will guarantee you to be reborn in the, in the blissful realm again and again. No? So the Buddha, when we see, no, we come across the Buddha's teaching, then if we abide by this advice of the Buddha, then no, very, very beneficial to us. Just imagine, no? otherwise we will be born in a woeful state. Then we get lost for many existences. No, we have to suffer very greatly. Now, no, we are sure we shall be born in this full realm again and again. <laughs> you are very lucky to have a good translator as, it are, as Anthony Lawrence. <laughs> now, as you can hear, you can hear the teaching, both in English and in Indonesian language. We hope you will not forget it in seven days. <laughs> so the eight Lofa Mula cheetahs are displayed very beautifully here, not on this chart. So we have no, Deity Sun, Deity We, not Deity Sun, Deity We. So Deity We means, so again you can look there, not in your book. Sambhutam means associated with or connected with. So Deity Kata Sambhutam means no, the, the consciousness is associated with the wrong view. So when you are enjoying sense pleasure, no, without any thought of Kama and Riza, then you have this consciousness. Now you understand Kama. So no, when you understand Kama, when you watch the movie, now you may have the thought, oh, I'm watching the movie with immoral mind, that is with great consciousness. So it will produce immoral, immoral kamas, and they will, they will bring bad results. So now if, you, you know, if you watch the movie with that knowledge, then we say you are, you are, you are, your mind is not associated with the wrong view. You are having the right view about kama and result. So at that time, you, your consciousness is called Deity Kata with Yutang. Not associated with the wrong view. No, with the wrong view. So when it does not associate with the wrong view, so no, the bad karma would be less weighty. When it associates both with greed and the wrong view, it is more weighty. It will bring you know, the worst and the worst result. Now there are two more words. No, so under those, so they they do not show well. <laughs> oh, they don't appear there. They don't appear there. So below the both of the positive sign, no, you have also the no the asa, no asa asankarika and satsangkarika. So in the meaning also we give you, you can find the word, no, the, the vipayutam means dissociated with, no, not connected with the wrong view. And uh, below that, asankarikam, 
and asankarika, they mean the same thing. So they mean spontaneous, unprompted, and automatic. So that means you know, that great root that conscious arises automatically, without being prompted by you or by others. So if it's prompted by you or others, then we say it is sa sankarika. No, sa sankara rika means sa means wit, wit prompting. So we call it you no know, prompted by oneself or by others, and it is volitionally inactive, inactive. So you no, know, there there is a good movie tonight, but you are quite busy, so you say, oh, I don't want to watch it. So, but your friend asks you, oh, it's very good movie, you should watch it. Then I, I better have it, I have it look, so if you watch. So we say it is being prompted by someone, so your mind is sasankari kam. So not volitionally active. So if not volitionally active, the kamma is weak. The kamma is weak, so it bears very poor, the little result. Now, Oh, today is a very good movie, I must watch it. <laughs> Without being prompted by anyone, you just watch it. Then we say it is asankari kam. No? Asankari kam, unprompted. So the kama would be more serious. So now we can name no, the eight rebuilt consciousness. So it's not very difficult. So we just name the first one. You just keep, keep the, the, that symbol is better. No, yeah, the sim, that symbol is better. So you had to change my, my, my this one with, with that, not the red. You give, my, you give yours, you give me one, one. So when we reach no, the Lopa Mula Chita, no, so we reach, no, so then he will point you no, to, to that the good one. So we, the way we read, we read the positive sign first. So we say, So manasa saha katam. And then we read no, the, the about the, the words, Deiti kata sambhyutam. And then we read, no, Asankari kam ekam. Ekam mean one. One consciousness, Asankarikam means unprompted, unprompted or spontaneous. Somana sasagadam means accompanied by pleasant mental feeling or with joy. And dechikada samyutam associated with the wrong view. Now that is the, the first lopa mula chitta. If you know this one, then the rest will become easy. So if you know this, uh, this one, no, one name, when you come to the second name, you just change Asankarika to Satsankarika. Only that. So how would you call it? No? So, So Manasa Sakatam, Tejikata Sambhyutam, Satsankarikam Ekam. Satsankarika means prompted. No? It's prompted by yourself or others. Now if you know these two, now then the next two, we just change this above word. Instead of Dejikata Samyutam, we say Dejikata Vipyutam. No, not associated or dissociated with the wrong view. Not associated with the wrong view. So how would you call the next two? So Manasa Sagatam, Dejikata Vipyutam, a sankari kam ekam, and the next one would be sa sankari kam ekam. So you can read, uh, read in the book about these four names. Please read. So manasa sahakatam, dechi kata sambiyutam, a sankari kam ekam, and number two is sa sankari kam ekam. Number three and four. So manasa sahagatam, dechi kata vipyutam, a sankhari kam ekam, sa sankhari kam ekam. Now if you know these four, four names, 
For the next four names, you just change Somanasa into Upika. That's all. So then we can read again, number five and six. Upika Saha Katam, Deti Kata Sambhutam, Asankarikam Ekam, Satsankarikam Ekam. Upika Saha Katam, Deti Kata Vipayutam, Asankarikam Ekam, Satsankarikam Ekam. So now you know the eight names. So now you can appear for the for the Abhidhamma examination. <laughs> so in the Abhidhamma examination, usually they ask you, now please write down you know, the the names of eight Lopamula Chaita. So you, you know you, you they prefer to uh, you to write in Pali, so you can write in Pali. So if you can, uh, you also know the meaning now. So the meaning is given at the, the bottom of that page. No? So you can read by yourself. Now we go to the next, no? page 134. We say obligation. No? Obligation means no? how these great rooted consciousness arise in you. How often they arise in you. Now, when you wake up in the morning, no, you wash your face and you look into the mirror. Whom did you see in the mirror? The most beautiful person in the world. <laughs> so when you see yourself, and you say, oh, I'm quite beautiful, I'm quite charming, then greed with that consciousness arises. No? So if you like this sense of that, you appreciate it, then no, greed with that consciousness will arise. And at that time, you have joy, it will be Somanasa Sagatam. If you don't have joy, it will be Upika Sagatam. And then you don't have any thought of karma and result, so it will be Dejikata Sambhutam. So if you have the thought about karma and its result, that is very rare, actually. So it will be Dejikata Vipyutam. So it arises no, the spontaneously, so we say it is Asankharikam. And sometimes it does not arise uh, not spontaneously. You say, oh, I'm quite charming, I'm quite beautiful. <laughs> then only later you, are, you, are, you like it. So we say it's sasankarika, not sasankarika. So from the morning not till night, we are always not in contact with the sense objects. So if the sense object is good, so we like it, we like to enjoy it. That it, if you have desire to enjoy it, do you also you know, appreciate enjoying it? And if you crave you not know, to enjoy it, so you know it is greed with that consciousness. Now greed also has attachment. No? So attachment is also the characteristic of the greed. So we say greed has the characteristic of craving, that is desiring, and attachment. Now, if you like this movie very much, so you want not to enjoy it again and again. So that means you have attachment to it. Now you have attachment to Chinese noodles. So in the morning, you better I can have no, that, that shop, some very good Chinese noodles, I should go and eat there. So there is attachment. Oh, Korean movie, I must watch it. <laughs> so attachment. No? So you know now, when you have attachment, craving, desire, so greed with that consciousness will be arising in you. So how often greed with that consciousness arises in you? You can see from morning till night. Most of the time, you are always craving, desiring to get this, to get that, to get money, to, to be successful in your, in your job, so that you get you know, to see the friends, to enjoy talking, chatting, also greed with that consciousness, <laughs> chatting and chatting. No? So when you see a person, oh, very beautiful, very charming, as soon as you, know, you, you say, like when you fall in love. So usually you know, people, the youngster now, they fall in love with greed with that consciousness. No? Because they like to enjoy sense pleasure. No? By, by you know, the getting acquainted with her, or you know, become the... the uh, the sweethearts and lovers. 
So they enjoy that, so that is greed with that consciousness. No? And now you also have attachment. If you cannot see each other, then no, the Buddha said, greed will give rise to no greed will give, give rise to no? worry, grief, sorrow, no, the, the grief, no, grief, grief, G R I E F, grief, grief, sorrow, sadness, and then even despair, and then fear, no, all these arises because of greed, because you like yourself very much. Oh, there's danger. You are going to be, you know, you have danger. You are scared. So why you are scared? Because you love yourself very much. You love yourself with greed. With greed. You, know? you love yourself with greed. And remember Romeo and Juliet? They fall in love. No, they fall in love. And when they were together, they say, oh, you no, know? love is a very splendid thing. <laughs> a very splendid thing. But then, no, now they are enjoying with greed. So when you are enjoying the movie or enjoying your, with your lovers, so you are having so manasa sagatam, no, dejikata sambhutam, asankharika lophamula jeta. Greed with their consciousness. We are enjoying with greed with their consciousness. Now the parents no, do not agree for their reunion. So Romeo and Juliet were separated. They cannot see each other. So, no, because of greed, they want to see each other very much. When you cannot see, when your wishes, your desires are not fulfilled, you get anger, angry. No, anger arises there. So they become very sad. Sadness due to the, the no, anger, anger-rooted consciousness. Fear is also anger-rooted consciousness. So because of that they get anger rooted consciousness. So when you get anger rooted consciousness, you will see it is accompanied by you know, this, the, this star sign. The star sign we say is Dhammanasa. Dhammanasa is painful mental feeling. Somanasa is pleasant mental feeling. Dhammanasa, painful mental feeling. So you know, when your desires are not fulfilled, you get painful, painful mental feeling. No, so we say the more you love each other, no, the greater the despair, no, the, the sadness will arise in you when you are separated. So they have very strong dosa mula chaita, the anger no, causing that the, the mental pain. So they cannot bear this pain anymore. They committed suicide. Both of them committed suicide. Many lovers, no, including Romeo and uh, the Marilyn Monroe, that very beautiful actress, no, because of the unpleasant love affairs. So Marilyn Monroe also took overdose of no, the, uh, the sleeping pills and no, committed suicide. Many people committed suicide. And because of attachment to the well, no attachment to the well. So now we say those billionaires, when they lost many billions of dollars no, in the economic depression, they committed suicide. So you can see these are happening in all the world. No? So you can understand, oh, these are because of the greed. No? So greed is influence all the people. They are under the influence of the greed. They are happy with greed. And then they become sorry because of greed and when they attain the anger-rooted consciousness. Okay. So at the bottom, two paragraphs of page 34, we gave you two exercises so that you can prepare for your examination. <laughs> so exercise one, now can you name the chaita that is arising in a person listening joyfully to a pleasant song without giving any thought to karma and its result. So you should know, since she is you know, he or enjoying the song, so greed would be arising. So you know it's greed with the consciousness. And now she is enjoying joyfully 
that means pleasant feeling or joy is arising, so it is so manasa sagatam. And he does not pay any attention to kama in riza, so it is dechi kata with you tam. No, as he is enjoying by himself without being prompted by anyone, it is asankhari kam. So if you know that, you can say the name of the, uh, the chaita. So what is the name? So we give the answer below. So manasa sahakatam, dechi kata sambayutam, asankharika lopa mula chaita. So now you have to put in the word lopa mula chaita. No? Because like in the you know in this chat here when we say Lopa Mula Chaita, we also give you the name Lopa Mula Chaita here. So when we say we give the name, we don't mention Lopa Mula Chaita there. But here you have to mention it is Lopa Mula Chaita. Yes. Now in exercise two. Now a man is stealing a handbag after much persuasion by himself because he is aware of the immoral karma and its bad effect. What is this chaita? So now a man is stealing a handbag. So what would be the chaita? So no, when you steal some, someone's uh, bag of someone's money, so it is because of greed. No, you are greed to get it. So you know greed to their consciousness arises. Now we say, no, after no, the much persuasion by himself, because he knows karma in his effect. So as he knows karma in his effect, it is tejikata with you tam, not associated with the wrong view. And it is satsangkari kam, being persuaded by himself. So if he have to be persuaded by himself, that means he is not willing to, to take. So would he have joy during that, that time? No, so it should be Upika. So the name of the chaita, Upika Saha Kadam, Dechi Kata Vipyutam, Satsankarika Lopa Mula Chaitas. Then we describe eight more examples. No? So eight more examples. So they described no, the eight Lopa Mula Chaita. So no, you can practice by yourself. So now you understand not these Lopa Mula chaitas quite well. So when you understand them, so you can stop them. No? So you can stop them. So you make the effort so that they will not arise very often in you. Then no, it will be much beneficial for you. So now it's 7 p.m. So we, uh, we stop for the, for the dinner break this time. So, not dinner break. So, in your, your chart is given, you know, the 6.30 to 7.30. So, now we take the dinner from 7 to 7.30, you know, for half an hour. And then, you not know, the last you know, program there. So, I think we should take it. You know, so, that is from 7.30 to 9, they say there. So they say it should be either meditation or about questions or answer. So today I like to teach you meditation at that time. Why we should undertake meditation? What happens when we undertake meditation? And how to undertake no, this meditation? So I like to tell you so that when you meditate them, you can meditate correctly and get great benefit. Would that be all right? So to meet again at 7.30, not to run away. <laughs> so I hope that Christine will give you the, the Visuti Mega book no, at 7.30 when you come to the class. No? So okay. Uh, yeah. Have dinner. No, enjoy your dinner <laughs> with greed. Greed with that consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> to study about meditation. So, this period is also supposed to be question and answers. You can ask questions, and I can also ask questions. <laughs> so, my first question to you. <laughs>
is an important question actually now how can we live beneficially then mean what is the beneficial way of living the happy and beneficial way of living so very important now who, how would you answer <laughs> no suggestion uh, no they, suggestion they said uh, looking for money as much as possible but uh, the money is used for uh, to, to, to perform the meritorious so money is very important in life <laughs> So we have not to walk not for a living. No, we have to walk for a living. Not to keep, to sustain this body, to keep our body healthy, no, healthy, so that we can perform meritorious deeds. We can perform meritorious deeds. But we should not create for money. No, we should not desire not to get so, so no a lot a lot of money so you want to go want to get a lot of money that also means greed so you have greed no so if you are living with greed so you know it in moral minds would be arising no so it is not beneficial no it is not beneficial so before you have the chance to do meditative state just in trying to get a lot of money If you die, then you will be born in a global state. So now, no, when we learn about karma and its result, no, karma and its result is very important. No, because it is the karma that is going to determine no, our happiness or our unhappiness. and our success or sorrow no and then no our so our good fate and bad fate and in our or destiny so the karma determines our fate and destiny so if we live only with immoral minds So you already understand in moral minds produce only in moral karma which will be bad result no bad result including failure in whatever you do great loss in many, in many ways in your property and uh, the you know, your beloved ones and also you no know, when you die you will be born in bubu state so no is is important not to develop in moral karma not the bad karma so no we we should take care no so that the the in moral karma will not arise in us now on the other end the good karma no the good karma will be great result no will be a good result good great result and including no success in life and happiness in life no and then also when you die you will be born in this realm no in this realm so we say to live beneficially and happily is to live with moral minds no to live with moral mind is no the the art of living and it is the beneficial way of living now how to live with moral mind how can we live with moral minds so again these are very important question <laughs> that's what we should do in life no but in life so as we i told you now if you most of the people they think not to get money and to enjoy sense pleasure not the luxury of life or this this thing so that is not the right way that is the wrong way actually no so No, the Buddha he said sensual pleasure no gives very little no pleasure and it will bring no great no the bad result 
So, in the in his first discourse, that is in Dhamma Chaka Pavatana Sutta. No? So, Dhamma Chaka Pavatana Sutta is the discourse that turns the wheel of the Dhamma. So, there he described you know, the Four Noble Truths, no? actually, in that discourse. So, the Four Noble Truths is most important to understand in this life. No? So, only when you understand Four Noble Truths, no? in detail, in all aspects, then you can be enlightened as noble person. Then that will be the best. No, even if we attain the first enlightenment, to become stream winner is already satisfactory. No, satisfactory. So that means no, we can live happily for many existences more, enjoying sense pleasure as well as the unique bliss of Nibbana. And we are guaranteed never to be reborn in the Wopo state. So that is the most important. No, not to be reborn in the Wopo state when we die. No, so how to prevent that? So as say, no, so we have to no, to reduce the, the immoral karma from arising and then develop moral karma. No? <clears throat> and and, and in, in the in the, the past discourse, the Buddha he you know he said no, the, the, to attain Nibbana we must follow the middle path. So the middle path and abstaining from the two extremes. So the middle path means no, abstaining from the two extremes. So what are the two extremes? So Anthony would be all right for you. <laughs> so you, you just <laughs> no, the one extreme is enjoying sense pleasure. No, enjoying sense pleasure is one extreme. So the Buddha said no, in that first discourse, enjoying sense pleasure is low and wicked. It's low and wicked. That means it is a low form of enjoyment. And it is wicked because we enjoy it with lopa mula chitta, kuridu that consciousness. That is in moral minds. So why you are enjoying it? You are developing only in moral karma. You are in moral karma. So this in moral karma will bear bad result in this life as well as after death. You will be born in the Wubo state. And then also he said, enjoying sense pleasure is practiced only by warlings, not by noble person. And it will not give rise to any benefit. So you, even you are enjoying sense pleasure, no, you don't get any benefit. Only that no, the, the momentary no, pleasure that you get. And momentary pleasure, as soon as they arise, they dissolve. So when they dissolve, no, when you get the pleasure, oh, it's a good feeling. So greed arises, no, you crave for it. You want to enjoy it more and more. You are attached to it. Now when you cannot get it, again it means suffering. So the Buddha said it is only a form of suffering. No, a form of suffering. So there, no, actually you should know there are three forms of suffering. No, when the Buddha, he, descri he described that. No, in the, the first noble truth, the noble truth of suffering. So he say, no, there are three forms of suffering. So one form is, no, there is the prominent the pain, the prominent pain. Bodily pain and mental pain. No? So when you get mental pain, bodily pain, then that means that means suffering. So when you, you lost no, your very beloved ones or many well, so you feel very sad. So you get mental pain that day. So there's suffering. No? And also no, when you have very cold weather, you are shriveling and mosquito biting, you get bodily pain, there's suffering. No, so not to get what you want is suffering and to associate with un, no, the beloved ones are also suffering. No, so the Buddha said, and but not aging and then disease, no, 
the aging, so you know, diseases and death are suffering. So these are the prominent suffering. Now, now we say the enjoyment of sense pleasure. It is you know, the suffering due to change in condition. Now, only when the you know, conditions are ripe, that pleasant feeling is arising in you, so you are enjoying it. But as soon as it arises, it, it, uh, it dissolves. So when it dissolves, it becomes suffering. So when you have family union, so when your family, all the members are healthy and doing very well, so you are very happy to be together, to eat together. But very soon you have to separate. You have to go your own way. So meeting always ends in separation. So when you have to separate from your beloved ones, that means suffering. So it also this is suffering due to change in condition. Not change to condition. And the third form is called no, the Sankara Dukkha. Sankara means mentality, materiality. So to have mentality, materiality is to have suffering. Because mentality, materiality arising, dissolving very rapidly. This is their intrinsic inner, uh, property. Intrinsic property. As soon as they arise, they will, stop, they will dissolve. No, so all our mentality, no, materiality uh, arising and dissolving all the time. So that means Sankara Dukkha. No, that is the real Dukkha. No, so we have to see this Dukkha in Vipassana meditation. No, only then we know, oh, it's suffering. We don't want no, this mentality material anymore. And we can we are not attach to any existence. Only then you can go to Nibbana, otherwise you cannot you cannot get to Nibbana. No? So we say to get great enjoyment, you have to give up, to give away little enjoyment. <laughs> little enjoyment. <laughs> to catch a big fish, you have to let go a small fish. Now you use the more small fish as the pawn and you tie you know, to, to catch the big fish. <laughs> so that is the way <laughs> we should do. The, the, the other extreme is self-torture. Torturing yourself you know, with the wrong way of practice. You know, just like even during the Buddha's time, there are persons who, you know, who practice dog morality, they say. So they live like the dog. And then some practice the, the bovine morality. So they live like an ox. <laughs> And some sleep on thorns, no, on thorns, no, just not to torture their body. And some, no, they, they sit in the middle of four fires, no, four fires in the middle, at the noon time, with the sun is above. That is, they are, they are roasting themselves with the, with the heat. So they say, just by roasting that, you can get rid of those greed anger and ignorance. So it just amounts to torturing yourself. No, even our Buddha, our Bodhisattva, we might say, so he spent six years, no, that is, practicing the wrong practice. And it is actually torturing himself. Torturing himself. So the way he practiced at that time is what is popular at that time. Other people, they don't know how to practice to get Nibbana. So no, they just they know this no, the, the the greed, anger, ignorance. They are the root cause of suffering. They know it. Now how to get rid of them? So no, the, our body sutta. When he breathe in, he try to control that breath not to come out. So no, when you control your breath not to come out from the nose, the breath come out from your ears. So, you know, when he controls so much, you know, the air, it comes with great force. So, with, the, with loud sound, shoo she, shoo she, shoo she. Then he tried to block the, the, the ears, not to come from the ears. Then, you know, it, it, you know, it pushes uh, your, the brain. So, you know, the, the, he, he felt great pain, as if you know, stirring your brain, you know, your head, your brain. 
with a pointed iron. Very painful. So six years he practiced that. So he said, you know, this, this practice, torturing yourself, it brings only pain, bodily pain and mental pain. And you know, it is practiced only by warlings, not by noble person. And what, it will not give rise to any benefit. So if you are practicing meditation the wrong way, it may amount to torturing yourself. So giving very little benefit. Now you just open your no, the Visuddhi Magga. So on page twenty. No? On page twenty. So no, we 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 shall read two paragraphs there. So what the Buddha say? No, that is actually taken from the first discourse of the Buddha. O bhikkhus, no, bhikkhus means monks. Now, O monks, avoiding both these two extremes, the Thagata means the Buddha, has realized the middle path. This path produces vision. No, vision, so you can see the truth, and produces knowledge. Knowledge is the same as wisdom, and it leads to calm, now calmness of the mind, and to higher knowledge, so not ordinary, not knowledge, to higher knowledge, to enlightenment, to Nibbana. So it will lead up to Nibbana. Now, now the next paragraph. And what is that middle part, O monks, that the Tagata, the Buddha, has realized? It is simply the eight, uh, the noble eightfold part. No, it is called eightfold part because it contains eight factors. No, it is the noble part because it leads to nibbana. So, namely, right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Now, on page 21, now the eight factors of the path are classified at, as three training. So we call, we call this training, three-four noble training. No, noble three-four training. So you can look on page 21 at the top. So training of wisdom no, is called Panya Sikha. Panya means wisdom, Sikha means training. So this training of wisdom consists of the right understanding and the right thought. So the right thought, the right understanding. Now number two is training of morality. So it's called Sila Sikha. Now morality is called Sila. So it is Sila Sikha. So it contains three factors. The right speech is the speech no, avoiding from the four evil speeches. I explained to you this morning. No, the four evil speeches, when we observe five moral precepts, when we, I say, when you say Musawada, abstaining from the wrong speech, mean we have to abstain from all the, the four false speeches. Lying, slandering, abusing language and gossiping. So, no try to avoid gossiping as much as possible. As soon as the, the class is over, you get together, oh, talking each other, each other. So, no, that actually amounts to gossiping. No gossiping, you just waste your time by gossiping. And during that time, you're gossiping only for pleasure. No, for pleasure means that is great, for greed. So only greed root that consciousness will be arising at that time. No, so because of that the Buddha said, you can be born in a boho state just by this no gossiping. So try to, to reduce it. If you want to talk to each other, talk about Abhidhamma. <laughs> or talk about Visuddhi <laughs> Then it will be beneficial. No? And then the right action is the action that avoids three evil bodily actions, killing, stealing, 
and sexual misconduct. Now, when we say that the that the sexual misconduct it also includes misuse of the senses. So, in the misuse of the senses, taking intoxicating drinks and drugs is misuse of the senses. So, it is included in the five precept also. Now, the fifth precept is to abstain from in the sock intoxicating drinks and drugs. Now, that is the right not the the right action, and then the right livelihood. So you should earn the living for your livelihood, but you should do it the right way, not the right livelihood. So the right livelihood being, you, know, you should find your you know, work for money, you no, know, by avoiding the wrong speech and the wrong action, and you should avoid any any, any livelihood that may cause harm to any living being not just selling live animals. And now the people, they are making, the, the, they are even selling the human being. They call human trafficking, they call them. And selling like the drinks and drugs. No? And like uh, selling poison and weapons. So this should not be practiced. No? So if you have to earn a living to sell in the insect, uh, the insecticides, so you should avoid it. No? You should avoid it. So that is not the uh, the the right no 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 more training of morality, and then the next three factors, no, are uh, classified as training of concentration. No training and concentration, the smart seeker. It is a must. No, it's, we cannot ask, uh, avoid this. Now, what is uh, the the training of concentration? So the right effort. No, we must. No, exert the right effort no, to, to perform meritorious deeds and to do meditation no, to attain the right concentration. The right concentration is usually what the Buddha wants is jhana concentration. And the right mindfulness, so no, you should be mindful of meritorious deeds all the time. So in meditation you have to be mindful of your meditation subject. No, so when we say in bread and out bread, in bread and out bread is your meditation subject. No, you should be mindful of it all, all the time. So when we say you are mindful of no, this meditation subject, that means you should know the in bread and the out bread all the time. No, as soon as no, you forget, your mind will run away, will run out. No, so mindfulness is very important in meditation. And the right concentration, as we just said, no, the Buddha prefer jhana concentration. So we should undertake meditation to develop the right concentration. And these, no, these, the, these three factors, the right effort, the right mindfulness, and the right con concentration, they also amount to three powers, three powers no, that we possess to fight against the enemies. So what are the enemies? What are they? Defilements. Defilements are the enemy. Not Lopa, Dosa, Moha. We have to fight them. So you need you know, this, uh, the, this very you know, good, the effective weapon. This is the right concentration. So if you don't uh, the, you develop the right effort, the right mindfulness, the right concentration, you will not succeed in your meditation. Now, so now in this three training, so one is Panya, second is Sila, and the third one is Samadhi. So we say Sila, Samadhi, Panya no, is the essence of all the Buddha's teaching. The essence of all the Buddha's teaching because no, by this threefold training, you can eliminate all defilements from your mind. So if you can de 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 no, destroy all defilement, you will become fully enlightened no, as an arahat. So we call arahat to be a perfect person. So enjoying Nibbana no, all the time, you can do that. So to live most ben beneficially, 
would be to undertake this three, four noble training. So if you have enough money to live on, the best way is you know, to, to stop your, your, your work and undertake this three, four noble training you know, without any lapse in time, you know, without any delay. That will be the best. Now, <coughs> if you cannot stop no, your, your walk yet, you have to, to walk on. So we should incorporate this, no, the threefold training in our daily life. So we should begin with the training of morality. No, training of morality, morality sila is the foundation of higher, higher merit. It is the foundation of this three full noble training. So, no, as we said earlier, no, we should keep three full refuge and then also five moral precepts. No? So, in our daily life, no, we, can, no, we can practice that. So early in the morning, we say the first thing we do should be to take this three, four refuge and five precepts. And take again when you, before you go to bed. So when you sleep, you are sleeping with the three, four refuge and the, the, the five precepts. So most of the time you are with the, the five precepts. So when we say when you use the, the three, four refuge, if you remember and respect the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha, then no, you can develop moral mind. Why you are reflecting on the attitude of the Buddha, the Dhamma, or the Sangha. So, after taking three, four refuge and five precepts, no, so the whole day you are just like gossiping, no, and then no, the enjoying sense pleasure, and working for money, just thinking how to get money, and worrying about the family affairs, all this, and worrying about your job, all this, you are living with immoral mind. So, no, you should, you should know that. So, no, try to stop this immoral mind from arising no, as much as possible. And then you have to re not reflect, you have to be aware, oh, I am observing Pai Precept. Now, there is very no, noble training. No, the guided by the Buddha, and I am actually by observing Pai Precept, I am walking on the path to Nibbana. So we should be very glad like that. So in the Pai Precept, no, we abstain from all the ten evil actions. No, so we lead very pure life. So by that we say, you enjoy the highest happiness as a household person. No, this is very nice actually. So try to be, you not know, to be, you not know, the aware of these things. You know, so why you are observing precept? You no, know, so so try to avoid those gossiping <laughs> about the, all the immoral thoughts from arising. Now, when we abstain from stealing other people's property, it amounts to giving back their property to the to the owners. So, it is similar to almsgiving. And also when we abstain from killing living beings, we are giving no, their life back to them. No, by not killing them, we are giving them their life. So, no, the five moral precepts is also regarded as Mahadhana. Great offering. Great offering. So, in other words, when we are practicing five moral precepts, we should also practice almsgiving, that is dana, not dana. So almsgiving dana should be practiced because karma bears, no, bears the same result as you have done it. Not just like a seed, like a mango seed will give rise to a mango, a mango tree bearing mango fruits. An apple seed will give rise to an apple tree bearing apple, apple fruit. The same thing no, in, in the science, we also have the, the law. So no, the law says, to every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So it is also true 
no, in the no, in the meritorious deeds and the evil deeds. If you kill no, a, a person, one, not just one, not just like during the, no, uh, the time of the Buddha, no, Dhamma Dinna, she is, no, she is foremost, she is an arahat, and she is foremost in teaching the Dhamma talk. And she possesses supernormal power to see, to know her past existences. And she found it in one existence, no? A very intimate friend of her husband came to the house. The husband said, my wife, you please cook good food no, for, for, for our guests. So she went no, to the market, but already late, so she could not get any meat. She came back, so she remembered there, no, she ray a little, a little no, uh, goat, a little goat, they call kitten, aren't they? So she cut the throat of that uh, the little goat and cooked the meat. So the husband and the guest admire her, oh, you are very good housewife, you are very good cook, so very nice. But when she died, she had to be banned no, in, the, in hell for many, many existences. And even after she you know, escaped from hell, she had to be born as animal. As many existences as there are hairs on the body of the little goat that she killed. Just imagine how many hairs on the body of the goat. So there may be you know, thousands of hairs. So she had to be born thousands of hairs, uh, not thousands of existences as animals. And in each existence, she was killed in the same way, by having the throat cut. No? So that means, no, you perform an evil action. During that action, we say, immoral minds arise by many billions. So you get many billions of bad karma. So they will produce the same result. So that means you have to be killed. No? How many times? So, no, we might say a million times, because in hell, when you are born to death, born again, born to death, born again, so that made millions of existence in hell. No, so that's why the Buddha said, don't perform immoral action. Now, when you perform moral action, giving alms, you will get back, not the same way. So if you donate you know, generously, so the money will come generously to you. <laughs> So, not to, to be rich, not to, so to live the, 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 the happily enjoying sense, sense pleasure in many existences, then we should donate, no, to donate no, our money no, as much as possible and to marry to the streets, not to help other people, and then, and then also not to help the, the, the temple. And uh, in my case, you can also donate. <laughs> So supporting me in writing Dhamma books and printing them, for the, so they will be very great, great merit actually. And when you perform any meritorious deed, you should also wish, always wish for no, Nibbana. So may this good, no, good deed support me to attain Nibbana no, as soon as possible. Then, no, the even arms giving will support you to attain Nibbana. This observing five precepts will support you no, to attain Nibbana. Very, very early you will attain that. 